to another exciting episode of Kevin Jake's thingy, Monty's Men thingy. What are we going to talk about today? Um, so today we're going to talk about uh, the large pack or release and its contents. Um, so <clears throat> for Monty's Men for example, we are we're expected to be carrying quite a lot of equipment um, and have a lot of uh, stuff left over really, so it's going to be, it's going to be fun to say the least. Yes, so in marching order, it's been more. So in marching order, you would have the Belize or large pack on your on your back. This is a 1908 carryover, basically to the 37. Um, you would have this on your back with the L straps, which are taken off the off the haversack, um, put onto this, and then you wear this on your back. As I said, you wear the haversack on your belt braces, basically. Um, as it's in its state here, we have the helmet, the Mark II steel helmet, um, or Mark III, whatever you're issued, depending on what regiment or battalion or whatever you were. Um, under the uh, cross straps of the uh, of the pack, um, tied to by by a uh, length of rope, we have the um, uh, rain cape or ground sheet, or ground sheet I should say really. This is the Mark VI, so this is not the, um, this is not the, the cape, yeah, this yeah, is just yeah. the ground sheet. Ground sheet, yeah. Um, under, well, wrapped in that basically is uh, the wool blanket as well. So for when you go down bed for the night, etc., and also just to keep you warm, really as well, is the uh, uh, wool blanket. Uh, basically, to keep it dry. That's what's in there. Yeah. The wool blanket. Yeah. yeah. The wool blanket. <laughs> should we should we open it up and yeah, definitely. maybe close in? Do you want to do you want to do the? Yeah. Do you want to do it this time? Yeah, I'll do it. Yeah. Okay. That bit won't ramble. Right. Okay. So here we have the. Uh, Large pack, as I said, so we'll take off the, uh, the rope tied up the back here. But as you can see, this, this is the ground sheet with the uh, wool blanket rolled up to keep it dry. Go and show them the date of the blanket of, of the on the um, the ground sheet. It's one of the originals. I'm proud. Okay. So 1942. Yep. Very, very nice example. Thank you, sir. You're very welcome. Also, we have the steel helmet. We'll just take off the uh, cross straps. Oh, um, the L straps are, would be taken off of your small pack. They would, yes. And then, obviously, your small pack or haversack would uh, go onto your belt braces. There's your steel helmet. Etc. So what we have here, so chocolate and board sweets in. Um, there's no chocolate and board sweets in here, here sadly, but uh, we'll open it up and take a look. Yep. This is where my knickknacks are. <laughs> so we have. They are spare buttons for the jerkin. No, indeed, yeah. We'll, uh, yes. Period. Correct uh, black boot polish. That's an original one. The same with the dubbin as well. Yep. Spare fork and spoon. Uh, these particular ones are dated 1940. Yep. The uh, main look for the toothpaste. Brush. It's a clothes brush, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And this one was 1942. Very, very nice example. Then we have nail scissors or general use scissors, really. They're foldable ones. Just like uh, these are modern um, made ones, but they're basically exactly the same style as uh, those used by um, uh, Fusilier Payne in the famous photographs we have there. Yeah. They fold them up. Like so. It's a dangerous weapon you've got there, sir. Indeed it is, sir. Then we have two examples of Valet Auto Shop razors. That's one there. And the other one. This one has the strop. Yes, the other one's missing the strop. So I'm going to put that in there and it's complete. <laughs> I am complete. <laughs> and then we have a shoe brush. 
1940, and this, that was actually eaten by a dog. <laughs> that is actually... Rover got a hand, yes. Rover got a hand of it. <laughs> <laughs> so what else have we got in there? So we have the uh, scrim scarf. Which, by the way, gone. is brilliant if you wet it and it's hot, you wear it around your neck, definitely, it really definitely. down. Um, great for things like concealment, etc. obviously. Yeah. But definitely great in the summer if you wet it. Spare pair of socks, uh, wool grey ones. These ones are actually Italian army ones. Yeah. Um, which are exactly the same as I found as the uh, wartime British ones and a lot cheaper than any reproduction you'll find. These are only like what, £2.50. Two pounds, £2 50, yeah, about £2.50. Yeah. 50, and they're perfect and they're much more comfortable. I would say, and well, we're not going to ruin an original pair if you have. We have drawers cellular. <laughs> it's my granddad pants. <laughs> These particular ones are 1943. Very, very nice pair. So. Really sexy as well. Look at that. Look at those. I like your, your thingy hangs you out. You can there. hear the screaming ladies <laughs> when they see it. I don't know, the wife wasn't impressed. <laughs> Spare pair of, um, these are civilian style braces. Uh, yep, uh, there's a date, I think these are 1941. Spare pair of braces. And then, I think last but not least, is the great coat, which... If you can get it out. Yeah. <laughs> So the great coat obviously is for warmth, um, comfort while sleeping, etc. Basically all those wonderful things when it's cold outside. So this is a um, wartime one. Just see there. Let's have a look. So 1944. Yes. So here, cut in quickly. Uh, we have a lovely uh, great coat modelled by our lovely. Slightly odd assistant, Evan. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> Obviously, this will be done up the back, but it was yeah. used to uh, to pin it down when it was in the. Uh, very in the thick. Pack. It's very warm. It's very yeah. very cumbersome. Did, that did I just become an officer? Oh, yes, you did, sir. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whereas Jake is wearing something else that you know can be used for warmth. Um, also more of a utility sort of thing yeah, for working. Yeah, so um, obviously the British Army have been using jerkins of many different types for many, many years. But um, during the First World War it was introduced as a, a better alternative to the uh, um, sheepskin wool um, type uh, fleeces they've been wearing. So they brought out the standard issue, um, basically to everyone almost, um, leather jerkins. So obviously sleeveless, but leather on the outside and then a uh, warm wool blanket for the material on the inside. This one was made in 1941. Really nice example. Very, very well, nice. Um, very, very comfortable. Yep. And allows you a lot more movement as well as the warmth. So, of a, of a, not so much of a great coat, but much more easier to use. You can use your equipment with it and etc. Yeah, you can sleep in it. It's, it's white clean as well. You could use this out on patrol, whereas exactly. this is a bit, it's a bit much when you've got everything on top. Yeah, exactly. So, this would pretty much stay with your large pack back at camp wouldn't it exactly exactly and it just depends with like the transports get up to because the whole british army was mechanized at the start of the second world war and throughout it was basically practically always mechanized so there will be transports will always have to come up to your large pack will be in there so sometimes you didn't get it sometimes you did so it's always a cross fingers sort of thing yeah okay cool thank you very much thank you very much Bye. thank you very much what's it they say and it's goodbye from me and it's goodbye from him <laughs> <laughs> we are silly <laughs>